I dare you to work on yourself for six months. I dare you to shut out the world. I dare you to shut out all the distractions. I dare you to give up everything that is keeping you from your dream. If you have a dream, don't just sit there. Get your ass up and make something happen. Sometimes you just have to move. Do something. Make a call. Reach out to someone. Google something. Learn something new. Write down what you need to do in order to make a better life for yourself. And be brave enough to do those things. I dare you to take a stand today to say no more. I will no longer accept this for my life. I dare you to take action today. I dare you to write your goals down and get someone to hold you accountable. I dare you to hold yourself accountable. I dare you. I dare you to give up everything that is keeping you from your dream. To say no to all the negative influences. I dare you to pick up a book instead of a drink. I dare you to work harder than you think you did yesterday. I dare you to prove them wrong. I dare you to prove yourself right. I dare you to stand up as a man or as a strong woman, as whoever you are, and declare that you are going to claim a bigger and better life for yourself. I dare you to make something happen this week, to take massive action this week, drop everything and do something. I dare you to walk more than you talk. I dare you to do good for the sake of doing good. I dare you to tell no one about it, to be kind for no reason. I dare you to spend time alone. I dare you to say no with pride. No to bad habits, to negative people, to wrongdoing. I dare you to speak your truth. I dare you to dream bigger, bigger than they told you was possible for your life. I dare you. I dare you to walk your own path. Wherever that leads, whatever they say, I dare you to lock the world out for a week and work on you, work on your dreams. You're well and truly capable of living at a higher level. If you do or you don't, that's up to you. Ask yourself, am I happy with my life exactly as it is now? Am I happy staying where I am? If you don't like to answer, get to work. Work on yourself. Work harder than you think you've worked in the past. More discipline, higher standards, more self-respect, more boundaries, less BS. More forward, less backward. More positive, less negative. Only those who dare to go after the life most don't have will ever have the chance of living a life most will never have. Only those who dare to fight for a great life have a chance to live a great life. What's it going to take for you to change? What's it going to take for you to realize your potential? What's it going to take for you to be proud? Proud of the person you are. Proud of your effort. Proud of the person you've become. What is it going to take? I don't care how scared you are. What you need to do is make bold decisions. Right now, you've got to begin training yourself to act. You've got to begin training yourself to take chances, to put yourself at risk, to risk embarrassment, to know that you're going to fail. That's the only way that you're ever going to get the things that you want out of life. All of us want to do something extraordinary. All of us want to be great. All of us have something inside ourselves that if we knew we couldn't fail, we would pursue that. And that question, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? That question is one of the most important questions that you can ever ask yourself. And the reality is you can do that thing, but you're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to take chances. You're going to have to put everything at risk. And the problem is the reason that people play things so safe is because it's so comfortable there. It's so easy there and every day passes by without you noticing that terrifying passage of time. But once you realize that this is it, this is the one shot that you have and what does it really matter if you fail? What does it really matter what other people think? The only thing that really matters is what do you think about yourself? And let me tell you right now, that self-belief is going to be built of knowing that you're willing to try. 
It isn't going to be built on whether or not you succeed. It's going to be built on whether or not you try, whether or not you show up in that moment. That thing that you've rehearsed in your head a thousand times where you hope you will be courageous. Be courageous. Know that about yourself. Know that every moment is that moment. Sometimes it's so small, it seems imperceptible. It seems like it's not a moment for courage. But every moment is a moment for courage. Every moment right now is your chance to act, to strike, to be bold, to do the thing that you're afraid you won't be able to do, but to do the thing that you know could lead you where you want to go, to do the thing that you would do if you knew you couldn't fail. But courage is doing it, even though you might fail. So be courageous. Be bold. Strike now. It's supposed to be hard. If it were easy, everyone would do it. Keep your mouth shut and work. Let your success make the noise. I demand success. Success and nothing less. I will achieve success. I will never settle for anything less. I will work harder than the rest. I will challenge the best. I will fight through any of life's tests. I am not blessed because everything went right. I'm blessed because I got fight. When challenges come up, I don't say why me. When tough times arrive, I never think why did this happen to me? I say, how can I use this? I say, what can I gain from this? How can I ensure that I improve my life? so this doesn't happen again. That's my blessing. Not what I've got to work with, but how I work with what I got. Not that I was handed my dreams, but that I had enough fight in me, that I had enough belief in me to go after my dream, that I had the courage to keep going, to push through the pain, to rise through the darkness, and to tell my story on the other side. My story, my blessed story. It doesn't matter where you are in life. If you don't feel blessed, you won't be blessed. You gotta appreciate what you have inside you before you can see the gifts outside of you. You gotta know your worth before you can be worth anything. You gotta know you're great before anyone else will see the greatness within you. You gotta feel blessed before you will be blessed. Today could be the day. Are you ready to commit? Are you ready for greatness? I'm not blessed because everything went right. I'm blessed because I got fight. I've been through some tough times in my life. Times where I didn't think I could make it. Sometimes where maybe I didn't want to make it. But every time I was down, I got up, I fought back, I rose to the occasion. Listen to me. You're down, but you're not out. I don't think you heard me. You've been knocked down, but you have not been knocked out. Get up, get up. Whatever you're going through, it is temporary. It is not permanent, unless you let it be. This challenge was not sent to destroy you. It was sent to define you. Everything comes down to you. Your choices, the meaning you give to every moment in your life. Get up, you'll never find the answers you need down there. You'll never reach the peak of your life, down there. Get up and keep climbing. Keep climbing up that mountain. I promise you, the views, when you reach the peak, it will be worth it. The views from the top will be worth it because you know how it feels at the bottom. You have seen the darkness. Now it's time to earn the light. You have felt the pain. Now it's time to feel the blessings. You could have drowned in your own tears, but soon you will be showered with greatness. Get up, use the pain.
Don't let it use you. Turn your pain into power. You decide how this moment defines your life. You decide how this moment defines your future. Will you use the pain or will the pain push you back? Are you gonna cry about it or conquer it? This is not a problem. It is a challenge. Persist through this challenge. On the other side is your pride. Do not let your pain go to waste. Those tears meant something. They were created to make you feel something. Something that will snap you out of this sorry state. Get up. Enough is enough. Get up. Make a plan. Fight for the life you must have. You at the bottom, but you do not have to stay there. Let this moment change you. Let this be your defining moment. Never forget this moment. This is the moment that changed everything. Fight for that life. Know where you're targeting. Know how you will get there and get moving. Keep climbing. See, effort is what separates the boys from the men. What you do every day will dictate your future. What you want out of your life is what you got to put in. Yeah, failure happens. Mistakes as well, but without them, how could you grow? How can you become that successful entrepreneur without learning the lessons of failure? How much effort would you put in today to guarantee the future for your family? To guarantee the empire that you dreamed of as a kid? Most of you claim You've been working hard because you got tired. Oh, I did work hard, but success still didn't come. No, you worked until you got tired. Tired doesn't equal hard work. It's how hard you work after you get tired. When you get tired, that is when the real work starts. How hard do you push when you get tired? How many reps have you got left in you when your body says no? How many hours have you got left in you when the mind says no? How many times can you get back up after life has beaten you down time and time again? If you want better than average, you have to work harder than the average. If you want greatness, your effort must be greater than great. It's not all about physical effort. It's about the effort you apply to learning, the effort you apply to growing, the effort you apply to finding solutions. It's as much about working smart as it is hard. The effort you put in to become a better person, a more understanding person. The effort you put in to helping others. How many other lives do you impact around you? From the effort you give to others. Your quality of life depends on your effort. It doesn't matter what success means to you. Whatever it is, it will require your effort. If you want to be a good friend, a good parent, effort is required. If you want financial success or physical strength, effort is required. And your level of effort will equal your level of results. There are no mistakes. Give your all every day, every minute of every day, your best effort in each present moment will lead to your best future moments. There are no mistakes. All your effort, all you got. Why do you want that dream so bad? Why are you willing to put in all those extra hours? Why are you willing to sacrifice and fight for that dream? It's not for the money. It's for the freedom. The opposite of freedom is slavery. Being a slave to your own negative thoughts. Being a slave to others' expectations and opinions. Being a slave to limitations. Why are you prepared to risk everything for that dream that no one can see but you? Why would you prefer to put in 80 hours a week for your own dream, just so you don't have to put in 40 for someone else's? Freedom. Freedom 
because you will never get that freedom working for someone else. You'll never be in control working for someone else. Going your own way is the only shot at freedom. Going your own way is the only way you get to call the shots. It's much harder that way, and the chances of success are very slim. But you have no chance of getting that freedom if you settle. True freedom is freedom of choice, freedom of others' opinions, freedom of the mind, freedom of negative thoughts. If you want freedom, you're going to have to earn it. Work until you can say, I'm living life on my terms. I created this. If you want freedom, there's going to be an element of risk. There's going to have to be sacrifices made. There's going to have to be late nights, extra hours, persistence, and most importantly, growth. If you don't become someone else, you will not be able to earn your freedom. The person you are right now might not be good enough for the life you want. If you really want it, you're going to have to become someone else. You know the greatest thing money buys? It buys freedom. You know the greatest thing self-development does for you? It gives you freedom. The more you develop yourself, the more choices you have in life. The more you learn, the more you develop, the more skills you grow, the better you become, the greater your freedom. If you think your success in life is determined by factors outside of your control, then you will never be in control. If you don't believe you can do it, you will never get the effort required to do it. I'll tell you who freedom will never come to. Freedom will never come to those who quit. Never to those who give up. Never to those who choose the easy path. Never to those who lack self-discipline. Never to those who refuse to work on themselves. Never to those who seek comfort over growth. Never to those who seek security over their future. Your results in life are determined by you, your work, your belief, your sacrifice, your discipline, nothing else but you. None of you want the success for the money alone. Money is paper. It's meaningless by itself. But what it does for you, that is priceless. It can give you freedom. Freedom to choose what to do. Freedom to choose where to do what you do. There has never lived a self-made human being who created a successful, fulfilled life by luck, chance, or having everything work out perfectly. Freedom is earned. Living a life you love will not come unless you are willing to earn it. Are you willing to earn it? How do you get that freedom? That's not one element. That's not one trick or hack. It's a relentless pursuit of self-improvement. And the more you improve, the greater your chances of living a life on your own terms. Most people think the safe bet is taking a comfortable job. You get benefits. You get holidays. But in doing that, you sacrifice your freedom. The safest bet is always to bet on yourself. It won't pay off right away. And that's why most people quit. They don't back themselves. And that's why they lose their freedom. When you bet on yourself and back yourself to win in the end, you are placing a bet on your future. When you actually apply what you learn and continue to learn and continue to grow and keep moving forward with tiny steps, refusing to give up along that journey, eventually you will win. Eventually, you will get to a place where you decide what you want to do each day. No boss to tell you what time to start, when to take breaks or have holidays. No one to decide what benefits you get or don't get. You earn your benefits. And the best part is, I've never met someone that earned their freedom who just stopped there. Successful people don't stop. If they become financially free, they keep going. 
because they have that passion most people lack. They choose to work and they choose to work harder than ever, even when they don't have to, because they love the process. And that's the difference. Most people think they have the freedom because they work minimal hours and get holidays, while entrepreneurs work long hours without a holiday. But most people hate their job. I don't know about you, but I refuse to spend half my life doing something I hate. I choose freedom. If you want that freedom and you're not there yet and you don't know how to get there, here's how. Never stop. Never stop learning. Never stop applying what you learn. You have to force yourself to get better every single day. It's those tiny improvements done one million times. The improvements that seem insignificant as one, but when added up over years, calculate into your freedom. Work until you can say, I'm living life on my terms. I created this. Freedom! Sometimes rock bottom is the greatest gift. Because rock bottom, it's the only time people change. If things are going okay, people don't change. If things are just a little bad, people don't change. But when your life is at rock bottom, change is a must. You don't have to wait for your life to be in ruins. You can just decide right now. Enough is enough. You can decide that this is your lowest moment. Look at all the disgusting, unacceptable parts of your life. Don't hide them. Bring them to the light and the clear. You will change them all right now. If you're hiding them in the darkness where no one can see, you'll never change them. And if you never change them, you'll never experience your full potential. Bring them into the light. Take ownership of it. The disappointment of where it is and the declaration that it will change. You have to declare that this is going to happen. Don't declare it to others. Declare it to yourself. You have to insist it is going to happen. Get disgusted enough where you are right now so you force change. Think about the pain you will feel if you never change. Think about the difference you will make in the lives of those you love if you do change. Through your example, you can change them for the better. If you're not happy with a certain area of your life, change it. Do something about it. Nothing will change unless you do. Nothing will get better until you get better. You've got to say enough. It all changes. And it all changes now. I've had enough. The life I've been living is not good enough. And it's not going to change unless I change. It won't get better unless I get better. You've just got to think, I am not happy with this area. So I'm going to do something about it. Get disgusted. Change doesn't happen when you are content. Change doesn't happen if you refuse to look at what is bothering you. Don't hide it. Bring it to the light. Enough is enough. My standards are higher. I cannot accept this no longer. Enough is enough. If my future is going to be better, I must be better. And I must be better now. I must be better consistently. No more. No more weaknesses. No more limits. No more excuses. No more excuses. No matter what. I will not feel like this again. This is my lowest point. I've had enough. It changes now. Nothing will change unless you do. Nothing will get better until you get better. There's something inside you. Something that must come out. Something that must grow. Something that wants more. Let that something out. Let it grow. You deserve more. It's time to grow more. It's time to make more. It's time to work more. It's time to take more. It's time to say enough. Let go of the limits you were told. They don't apply to you. It's time to create the life you choose. 
Change isn't going to come about unless you put your foot down. Change will not happen unless it is a must. And it's only going to become a must if you bring all the crap you don't like into the light. Then you can go about the business of planning for the life you must have. But it all starts with a decision. It all starts with the courage to make that decision. Declare it. Now. Every morning, I rise. My feet touch the floor. I'm prepared for war. Prepared to grow. Ready for more. Average will never live in me. I'll show all your doubts. I will fight. I will win. You will see. I'm ready to give. Give all I have. I was born ready. Ready to contribute. Ready to create. Ready to grow. Can't stop. Won't slow. Greatness was never achieved by those who took the easy road. I flicked that switch, turned on beast mode. I know I must work. I know I must push. I know I must sacrifice. I will work. I will push. I will sacrifice. Never will I take advantage. I add value to all. I give my all for the benefit of all. I'll never take advantage. I'll never drop the ball. I'll lead with integrity. I will stand tall. My legacy is on the line. My pride is on the line. My integrity is on the line. My life is on the line! Never will I settle for less than I can be. Average will never ever live in me. It's what I fear the most, being like the rest. I will not rest until I'm better than the very best. Until I'm better than yesterday. Then I'll catch my breath. Recharge and go again. Go harder. Learn more. Grow more. So I can give more. So I can be proud. So I can be proud of what I've become. Proud because I've always given my all. Whether I lost or won, I kept going. I showed heart. I showed courage. I showed what I was made of. That's why I'm proud. I did it my way, not the easy way, my way. I didn't listen to others, my father or mother. I did what's best for me. I worked for it. I fought for it. I created my own legacy. Osho said the greatest fear in the world is the opinion of others. And the moment you're unafraid of the crowd, you are no longer a sheep. You become a lion. A great roar arises in your heart. The roar of freedom. Sheep have no freedom. The sheep live with fear and uncertainty every day. A sheep never leads. A lion never follows. A lion is in complete control of his or her life. The lion does not accept scraps and does not get told what to do or where to go. The lion goes about his business fearlessly and with extreme competence. You will never lead a lion to the slaughterhouse. They will lead you. The lion is the king of the jungle. And it's not because the lion is the biggest. It's not because the lion is the fastest. It's not because the lion is blessed with any great advantage over other animals. It's the mentality of the lion that makes the lion the king of the jungle. What is the lion mentality? 
Fearless courage. Bravery is a key trait of the lion. The lion will never surrender. The lion will never lie down and die, not even if surrounded by 10 hyenas. The fight is never over until it's over. Maybe you're not surrounded by hyenas. Maybe you're just buried by bills. Maybe you need to stand up for something you believe in that no one around you agrees with. Do not give up. Do not give in. Be fearless in going after what you really want in your life. Maybe you've been at it for years and nothing has worked. Yet. Maybe you're tired of hunting your goals and seeing no rewards. Do not give up. You must keep fighting. You have no guarantee of success if you keep going. But you do have possibility. There is a chance. The only guarantee comes with quitting. And that is the guarantee of missing out on the life you really want. Keep fighting for the life you must have. Regardless of the hyenas, no surrender. Certainty. The lion is certain. The lion never second guesses. When the lion goes in, it goes in 100%. There is nothing half-hearted about the lion. How great could your life be if you lived with the certainty of a lion? What if you just started believing in yourself and your own abilities? How far could you go with unbreakable self-belief? Who could you become if there was no doubt in you? If you trusted your intuition and just went for everything you want in life with the same ruthless certainty as a lion hunting its prey. You can't rely on other people to achieve the results you want in your life. You are the only one responsible for your results. Take responsibility. Take ownership. Take action. Only you know what's best for you in your life. Only you know which path to take in each moment of your life. You must make those decisions with certainty. Freedom. The lion has freedom because the lion demands freedom. The lion has freedom because he fights for freedom. His very nature says he will die for that freedom. Perhaps there is no more valuable asset on this earth than freedom. Something you can only understand if you've experienced a lack of it. In your own life, you must fight for freedom, your own and that of others. The freedom to speak your mind, the freedom to be who you want to be, the freedom to live on your terms. Freedom means fairness for all. The freedom to be who you must be while allowing others to be who they're going to be. There is no greater value. Fight for your freedom. Protective. The lion is protective of everything of value. The family, the pack, dinner. If you threaten anything of value to the lion, you better be prepared to fight. What do you need to protect? What are you willing to fight for in life? Not physically, mentally, emotionally. What are you willing to sacrifice your time for? What or who keeps you going? What is your purpose? What or who gives your life meaning? That is worth fighting for. Competence. Lions are said to sleep around 20 hours a day. Still, they never go home. They get up and they get the job done. They earn their rest. They earn their success. They earn their freedom. There are great rewards for competence. In life, if you provide more value to others than anyone else, in a shorter space of time, you will be rewarded and you will be rewarded well and often. It does not matter how long you work. It matters how good that work is. It doesn't matter how many hours you put in. It only matters how much value you've created. Develop yourself into a competent machine. Work on what matters in your life with laser focus, ruthless determination, and a burning desire to do everything to the very best of your ability. That builds pride and respect for yourself. You might be smarter than me. You could well be stronger than me. You might have more luck than me. But you cannot defeat me. You will not detach me from my purpose. 
You will not distract me from my goal. You will not dethrone me. And you will never destroy me. I will wake up with intention, alert, ready, focused. Whatever I want, I go after. Whatever I go after, I get. If it matters to me, I will get it. I will have it. I will be it. You cannot defeat me. You cannot detach me from my purpose. You cannot distract me from my goals. You cannot dethrone me. You cannot destroy me. A lot of people talk a good game, don't they? They say they're going to do this and that. But when push comes to shove, they disappear. When it's game time, they're nowhere to be seen. They say they're going to be the greatest ever, but their work ethic shows average effort. They say they're going to be rich or famous, but their habits are poor and ordinary. Talking is not enough. You must do. Talking is not enough. You must put in the work. You must develop the habit of following through with your word. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. It's called integrity. When you honor your word, you build pride for yourself and respect from others. When you don't, when you talk the talk and never walk, you lose pride and you lose respect. Repeat to yourself every day. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. If I give my word, I do it. If I talk it, I will walk it. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. If I give my word, I do it. If I talk it, I will walk it. When it gets hard, I gave my word. If something comes up, I gave my word. I will get it done. I don't even have to think twice. I get it done. I will get it done. Talkers talk. Walkers walk. Don't tell them what you're going to do. Show them what you've done. Let your results speak for you. Results say more than words ever will. Keep your word. Do the work. Get the results. Game time. This is my word. I've said it. Now I will do it. There's a quote that says, give me 100% and I'll give you 110% back. But if you give me 99%, you're not getting anything back. My expectation for myself is to always give everything I have to the task in front of me, to the person in front of me, in everything I do. If that is my expectation for myself, it must be my expectation for you as well. If you don't give me your all, you don't deserve my all. The way I see it, if you don't give me your all, you don't deserve anything. I don't care if you're scrubbing the toilets. You do it with the intention to scrub it better than anyone before you. That attitude will always lead to growth and future success. It doesn't matter what task you're doing, what job you are doing, or who you are talking to. Be there fully and show up to the best of your ability. Giving your all every time as a habit, as your intention, will lead to great things in every area of your life. Those who do the minimum 
will never be rewarded with maximum benefits. If you're only putting in the minimum effort required in your job, you don't deserve a pay raise. And you won't get one. Raises come to those who give their all, those who go above and beyond. Successful people notice those who have the desire to do better. It's not the talent or the ability that will see you rise up the ranks. It is desire. It is the willingness to get better. And you can only get better if you're giving your all every single time. If you're only doing what is required to pass the test, you'll never be the best in your field. The best give 100%, not 51% or 65%. Never the minimum. Always their personal maximum. To give your all in everything you do starts with intention. It starts as a mindset. But you can, over time, with repetition, develop it into a habit. It's a habit you might want to develop because it's the only way you're going to meet the you that has fulfilled your true potential. Don't think your mediocre efforts go unnoticed. Mediocre effort blocks everyone important who would otherwise be interested in helping you move forward. Do not put in half the effort unless you are happy with half of the results. If you have any ounce of self-pride, give your best in everything you do and see the results coming your way. Try it for 30 days, 60 days, a year, and notice the extra attention, the praise, the opportunities coming your way because of it. And when your negative habits resurface and you feel like giving less than your best, never forget the quote, give me 100% and you will get 110% back. If you give me 99%, you're not getting anything back. I heard Ed Milet once say, you're one decision away from a totally different life. And I agree with him. But I want to ask you this, what is that one decision? And the answer is to take complete and total responsibility for everything in your life. And I mean everything. The way that I explain it to people is if my wife were hit and killed by a meteorite, I would take responsibility for that. I would say that that is my fault, not to blame me or to put shame on me, but to remind myself that I'm in control, that there was always something I could have done. Now, I know that that's true, as crazy as that sounds, but I know right now there are a group of people tracking what are called near-Earth objects, making sure that if something like a meteorite is on a collision course with Earth, that they can do something to stop it. Now, even though I know they exist, I've never done anything to help them. I've never given them money or ideas or encouraging words. And I think that's the right answer. I think the likelihood of my wife being killed by a meteorite are virtually zero. But if it happened, I wouldn't waste time saying there was nothing I could have done about it. I know I have made a choice. And at the end of the day, that's the most powerful realization that you can have, that even inaction is a choice. You're deciding every minute what you're going to do with your time, your energies, your intelligence, your focus, all of it. You're deciding how to use it. And your life right now is an exact reflection of the choices you've made for better or worse. If you love your life, congratulations, you're making the right decisions. And if you hate your life, that's on nobody but you. And that's the best news I can give you. That's the most comforting thing I could say. Why? Because you can do something about it. If it were somebody else's fault, if life were happening to you, if you weren't in control, then there's nothing that you could do to get out of your situation. But the reality is you are in control. Every moment is an opportunity to do something different. And when you make different choices, when you take different actions, when you do different things, you get a different result. There's a reason that Einstein said the very definition of insanity is to do the same thing and expect a different result. 
So if you want something new for your life, it is very attainable. You can have something new. You can have all of the things that you want, but you're going to have to work your ass off. You're going to have to make the right decisions. And that's a hard thing to face. It's hard to accept that simply wanting it or being a good person or trying isn't enough. But it's not. You've got to work until you find the right answer. You've got to be willing to fail and fumble around until you find the path that actually works. But once you hold yourself to the standard of efficacy, that it actually got you the desired result, then your fumbling is going to be all for nothing because it's not directed at anything. You'll never know if you're hitting the mark if you don't have anything to aim at. But once you have that clarity and you know exactly what you're going for and you accept responsibility for whether or not you're getting there, then everything changes because you have the power. So right now, take your life back right now, no matter what is going on, no matter what has happened to you, no matter what crazy things have befallen you that seem like fate. Take ownership. Don't beat yourself up. Don't waste time feeling badly about it. Just recognize you are far more powerful and capable than you know. And once you take that, once you take the reins of your life, you can make the changes and the decisions that you need to get wherever you want to go. And that truly is the most powerful realization, the most important decision any of us can ever make. Never allow people who gave up on their dreams convince you to give up on yours. I won't be led astray by the opinions of others, by those who were too scared to go after their dreams, those who lack the courage to fight for their dream. It's not only your enemies and haters that will discourage you, but your own family and friends too. Your parents almost always want what's best for you. They talk you out of your dream because they don't want you to get hurt. They're conditioned to keep you from being hurt. Going right back to when you were a baby, you are not a baby anymore. You're a man. You're a woman. You're strong. You're your own person with your own opinions. You are in charge of your life. You are in charge of your own decisions. You are capable of making your own choices. And you are strong enough to handle the consequences if it doesn't work out. You are big enough to handle any challenge that comes based on the decisions you make on your own. You call it truth, I call it opinion. If I want an average, I would ask for their opinion. Please, don't get me wrong. I'm sure average is great, but average is not something I'm seeking right now. So best of luck and move along. Your truth is not my reality. Your opinion will never sway my dreams. My dreams will never be your success story. And don't expect me to say sorry, because I will never apologize for chasing my dreams, for having higher standards, for saying no when I need to, for doing everything I must do. Opinions are the cheapest commodity on earth just like a cheap, nasty hamburger. Everyone can have one, but it's best you don't digest. But I don't digest BS. See, there's a better food for your soul, and it's not found in others' opinions. It's found in your own inner voice. It's the courage inside you, the courage that has no fear of failure, no fear of opinions. It's found in following your heart. Not what's best for your mom or dad. Not what society says is good or bad. Not what makes you look important, but what you want. Critics, doubters, haters, naysayers. They will all discourage you because they are threatened by your success. They believe that if you become successful, they will be less significant. If you become successful, they will be left behind by you becoming more, they will become less. By you doing something with your life, it highlights the fact they have it. It's a small mind mentality, insecurity. Are you going to let insecure individuals bring you down to their level? Everyone has an opinion. Usually those with a lack of skill have a louder opinion than those with talent. 
They say the hardest prison to escape is your own mind. Very often, that is so true. Mostly because our minds are exploding with the opinions of others. Trying to fit into this world, trying to live up to others' expectations, comparing ourselves to others, mistaking opinions for the truth. Escape that prison and live free. Live like a king and answer only to your self. So many people never go for what they want because of the fear of others' opinions. Because of the fear of the word no. Because of haters and naysayers. That will never be me. I refuse to listen to the voices that will never understand my dream. I refuse to listen to the opinions of those who have never and will probably never achieve anything meaningful in their own life. I know my purpose, I know my destiny, and outside voices are just meaningless distractions. I will not be swayed by the opinions of others. I will not be distracted by their opinions. I have my blinkers on and I will not stop until I realize my true purpose, until my dream is my reality. There's only one voice you must listen to. Deep down, you know which voice that is. If you can see it in your mind, if you can believe it in your heart, if you have the courage to speak it, if you have the courage to own it and the desire to work for it, you can bring it into your reality. There's nothing off limits. There are no limitations. There are no limitations to those who believe and those who are willing to work for their dream. You have to see it in your mind before you can see it in your reality. You have to be a visionary. Picture everything you want so clearly in your mind until you can see it right in front of you. Write it all down on a piece of paper. Create a vision board. Then you will have evidence in the future. Evidence of the amazing power of your mind. The amazing power of you. If all you ever do is live by what is in front of you, reacting to the life in front of you, you will never move beyond the life that is in front of you. You have to be able to see outside of your current situation. You must be able to acknowledge where you are in life, but know you are capable of creating so much more. Know that where you are right now is not your life. You are where you are right now because of your past decisions and your past beliefs. Now it's time to sum up the courage to ask for better, to believe in better, to believe magic is on the way. Now it's time to get what you deserve. In life, we don't get what we ask for. We get what we ask and work for. Nothing in life will work without the work. No books, no seminars, no audio tapes, no gurus, nothing. Nothing will work if you don't. But I'm not talking about doing work you hate. There's no need for that. When you do work you love, it's not work. You do need to do something but you do it because you love doing it, not because you have to. And that's where the magic is created. You add value to others by doing what you want to do, and you get rewarded. What you want is not going to come to you by just dreaming about it. When you get in your car to go somewhere, you would never expect to arrive at the destination by just closing your eyes and dreaming about it. You know you can't get there instantly. You must know where you're going, but you also understand that right now you are here. And in order to get to your destination, there is going to be a journey. There might be roadblocks, detours, stop signs, even breakdowns. But if you really must get to that destination, you can and will find a way. You would never stop halfway and turn around because of a detour, a setback, or an obstacle. You just take whatever path leads to your destination, even if it wasn't the path you planned on taking even if it wasn't the easiest path. Life is no different. 
If you want something, anything in your life, you must first know where you are, and then you must know what it is going to take to get there. You make a commitment that no matter what happens, I will reach that destination. If I have to go the long way, I'll go the long way. If I have to learn a new way, I'll learn a new way. If there are detours, roadblocks, or breakdowns, I will keep going, fix the issue, get patched up, but I will never quit. If you just know, if you just believe, you will get there and you have the courage to see it through. There is nothing you can't have, nowhere you can't go, and no one you can't become. Muhammad Ali said, the man who has no imagination has no wings. If you can't envision it, if you can't believe it, you will never see it. You will never be it. You see, if you want to live an average life, that is fine. Keep your feet on the ground. But if you want to soar, if you want to achieve great things, you must not only think those crazy thoughts, but feel it. Feel what it would feel like to be doing that thing you want to do. Feel what it feels like to have all the things you want, to be the person that has achieved the things you want to achieve. The very process of you feeling like you already have it will send vibrational signals to your brain. And if you are willing to work for it, it will be in your life very soon. Albert Einstein once said, your imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. Only those who believe anything is possible can achieve the things most would consider impossible. You must know who you are going to be before you become that person. You must picture what you want to achieve and feel like you already have it before you can bring it into your reality. In the greatest book of all time, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill states, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. He says, you are the master of your destiny. You can influence, direct, and control your own environment. You can make your life what you want it to be. It's not a magic trick. It's not a new philosophy. Most of you know about it. And if you don't, you should start paying attention. Because just about anyone who is great knows about it. As Robin Sharma said, everything is created twice. First in the mind, and then in reality. There is an energy and power far greater than we can comprehend at play. And we can either use it, live in harmony with it, create with it, or run in fear from it. You don't like where you are? Change something. You don't like your body? Change something. You don't like being in debt? Change something. You don't like your job? Change it. Do something about it. You don't like how miserable you are all the time? Change something. Complaining about your situation is not going to change your situation. No one is coming to save you. There's a reason why Einstein labeled the definition of insanity as doing the same thing over and over but expecting a different result. Nothing will change until you change something. Nothing in your life will improve until you get off your pity potty and improve it yourself. How can it? Seriously, how do you expect anything will change if you don't change anything? Two plus two always equals four. If you want to get to five, you're going to have to change a number. It's law. It's common sense. You want change? Change something. You want better in your life? Sorry to bring the bad news, but it's you and you alone that is going to have to be better. But that's also the good news because you are in control. You're in control of how you feel and you're in control over the improvement that your future can see. If you make daily changes, daily improvements to make your life better, it really is all up to you. Tolstoy once said, everyone thinks of changing the world but no one thinks of changing himself. And that's just it, isn't it? You can't change the world until you change yourself. You can't have better relationships until you are better in relationships. 
You can't have a better body or health until you make the changes that make them better. You have to take radical and absolute responsibility for everything in your life. Own it all. Another way of saying it would be, everyone wants change, but no one is willing to start with themselves. And that is the only place that will bring change. Be brave enough to look at everything you don't like about your life. Not for pity, but with pride. Knowing exactly where you're headed. Knowing that you're going to make the changes needed to take your life where you want to take it. Knowing that it's all on you and you wouldn't have it any other way. Step back and take a look at your life as if from a bird's eye view, as if it were someone else's life. Then, pretend you're a wise mentor. What do you need to change now so that you can create the future you that you really want to be? What are the big decisions you must make now so you can live with pride tomorrow? Make those changes. Well, if somebody says something out loud, it's 10 times more powerful than if they think it. And then as we started to study the data, particularly data that was just reinforced by Christine Porath from Georgetown and Harvard, that negativity is a multiple of four to seven times more powerful than positivity. So think about that. If I say something out loud, it's 10x. If it's negative, it's four to seven times more powerful. So when I say negative things out loud, it's 40 to 70 times more likely that that will happen or cause a result that won't be good for me than if I just didn't say anything. So as we were going into our second year at Alabama, we made a bet. What if we could just get our players to not say stupid things out loud? What if we could just do that? Not teach any element of positive thinking, but eliminate conversations about the heat, complaining about coaches, complaining about circumstances, complaining about situations, verbalizing negativity. But we weren't going to lie to them and say, hey, be positive. We just taught them the data. And then what we did was some of the things that you, you noticed in the book, the stories in and around negativity are incredible. Tell us some. Um, Bill Buckner was one that took my breath away. So, so Billy Buckner, who just passed away recently, was uh, an incredible an eight-time gold glove, a great baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. Well, he made a mistake in sports that would be one of the biggest sport bloopers in history. And in 1986, he let the game-winning run score on a ground ball through his legs that ultimately would give the Mets the World Series. Mm -hmm. Now, I was just watching an ESPN E60 Jeremy Schapp story, and I saw an interview that was done in 1990 that resurfaced in 1995, where Buckner was interviewed 12 days before the World Series, and he said, you know, the dreams are to win, you know, to win the World Series, and the nightmare would be for me to let the game-winning run score on a ground ball through my legs. You know, and then ultimately that's exactly what would happen. Now, by saying that out loud, what did he do? He didn't make it happen, but he increased the probability. And this is what I want people to understand. Your internal thoughts are all over the place. Do you think that he makes it more likely because it's going to subtly influence his behavior or because you're talking to some magical deity that then says, well, you said it, and so I'm going to make it happen. I think that what he did is a subconscious plant. By verbalizing it and knowing that it's 10 times more powerful, he's planting it in his subconscious. He's not, he doesn't want it to happen, but it becomes something that's ultimately on his mind and he gave it more power by verbalizing. When you refuse to allow any doubts in your own mind, then no doubts from others will ever cloud your judgment. When you create a strong mind, there can be no other that will defeat you with their words or with their judgments. When you believe in you, you need no other to believe in you. Because others really have no say in who you will become. Only you have that say. Only you can decide if others' opinions become reality or you create your own fate. The greatest challenge and the greatest obstacle any human will face is their own doubts, their own fears, and their own conditioned thoughts. If you want to live your dream, you will have to fight for it. You will have to fight the greatest battles of your life. 
You will have to battle the external enemy. People who don't believe in you. People who do you wrong. People who put you down. You will have to battle the intimate enemy. Those close to you who might do you wrong, or maybe you assume don't believe in you. Those who want the best for you, but their idea of support is to remind you of what can't be done or shouldn't be attempted. But the worst of all is the internal enemy. You will have to battle what seems like an army in your own head, an army of doubt, fear of failure, fear of judgment, lack of belief. The voices inside the head saying, I am not good enough. I'm not worthy. I want to do this, but I can't. I want to give to those I love, but I can't. I'm not worthy of love. I'll never be able to do this. I am hopeless. I've tried everything. The world is against me. No one believes in me. My life's not worth living. There is no greater pain that can be inflicted on you than your own internal enemy. Your own thoughts will cause you more pain than anyone or anything. They can be likened to a terrorist living in your soul. But when you learn to control and direct your mind, you can direct that internal voice to work for you rather than against you. You get it to work for you by creating a compelling future. A future you will be proud to achieve, proud to live through. You do this by not just having goals, but having meaningful goals. Goals that get you excited to wake up every morning. You do this by understanding what your purpose in life really is. What are you doing it all for? When you know these things, when you work on yourself daily, you can quiet that voice in your head. You can feel good enough because you are good enough. But it does take a commitment, a commitment of daily practice to work on yourself. Cut out something that you spend a lot of time on that does nothing good for your life and replace it with daily work on you. Empower yourself. Set your life up to win. Well, my dad had gone to a Toastmasters early on and heard one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world speak. He comes back and tells me, I just had a chance to hear one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world speak. And he said, when are you taking your SAT? I said, I'm taking it next year. He said, well, this guy was failing out of high school. He was struggling. He was raised by a single mom in the Midwest, but he promised his mother he would take a test called the SAT. So he takes the SAT in May, his junior year, doesn't expect anything. Now the SAT, which I don't know how many your population know, but it's, it's a standardized test with a math part and a verbal part. Both are scored out of 800 points. Well, this guy takes it, he's, he's bombing, he's failing out of school, he doesn't expect anything as he's telling the story at Toastmasters. Well, he gets a 1480 out of 1600. So he's stunned, right? That would be for the smart That's people that listen to your podcast. insane, yeah. Right, cognitive dissonance, right? I got a like, 900 on my SATs just right. to give people a frame. Right, and I got a, a 1090, excuse me. And I got a 1010, right? I was just, hey, four digits. And it, you, you know, it's a variety of different things. So he gets the score and his mother, doing what any mother would do knowing her kids, says, did you cheat? Right? She knows her son. And he said, I swear to God, I tried to cheat, but the way the numbers were and the scantrons and the bubbles, you couldn't cheat. So she says, you mean to tell me you really got that score? He said, yeah, I got the score. So he's stunned, Tom. So as my dad's telling me the story, I'm like, okay. So he says, all right. So what he decides is because he realizes he's smart and he's going into his senior year, he says, I'm going to go to class. Now he starts to go to class. He doesn't hang out with who he did when he didn't go to class. All right. Teachers see him in class and they said, hey, maybe Franklin Pierce, maybe we missed the boat on this kid. So they start to treat him differently. Well, as the guy would tell the story, he graduates, goes to a community college, goes on to Wichita State, goes on to the Ivy League, and becomes this massively successful magazine entrepreneur. So I said, okay, well, the guy was always smart. He just needed a standardized test to unlock it. My dad said, no, that's not the story. This is what I want you to understand. He said, 12 years after all this guy's success, he gets a letter in the mail from Princeton, New Jersey doesn't think anything about it. The next day his wife says you're going to open it. He opens it, 
True story, it turns out the SAT board will periodically review their test taking procedures and the policies. The year he took the test, he was one of 13 people sent the wrong SAT score. His actual score was a 740 out of 1600. <laughs> and he said, people think my whole life changed when I got the 1480. But what happened? My whole life changed when I started acting like a 1480. And what does a 1480 do? He goes to class. Well, this is one of the first stories I would share when I had my opportunity at Alabama or Florida State or Georgia. So A, your language is powerful, but number two, your behavior is way ahead of your success. And so many people let their feelings dictate what they do as opposed to throw your behavior out there. Russell Wilson's 5'10". He shouldn't be playing pro football, but he behaves like the best quarterback in the country. And he's done that since before he was at that level. And then his feelings and emotions and his skill caught up to that behavior. I think the lesson my dad was trying to teach me um, ultimately was in addition to my language, what I do, not how I feel about my past, is going to determine who I am in the future. There's no such thing as not having enough time. There's only what you make as a priority. You make the time for what you must have. You make the time for the people you want to be around. You make the time for your musts. If you need to sacrifice for something you must have in your life, you will make that sacrifice. If it's not a priority, you won't work for it, and you will never have it. There's no such thing as not having enough money. The world is full of money. If you want it bad enough, you will find a way to get it. If you want money to start your business, you will find an investor, you will find a loan, you will find many loans, and you will work two jobs, three jobs, you will do whatever it takes to get what you need. There's only what you make as a priority. Listen to these words and listen closely. Whatever you must, you will. Whatever you must do, you will do. There's no doubt in that statement. Your life right now represents all the things you've made a priority. If you're like most, you've probably only made survival a priority. Getting by, paying the bills, doing the minimum. I choose not to live that way. I choose to do more. I choose to be more. There's no such thing as a lack of education. Self-education has made more millionaires than school ever will. There's only what you make as a priority. There's no such thing as talent. Hard work would always be talent. But do you want it bad enough? Or are you too lazy to work for it? So you fall back on excuses like talent. There's no such thing as lack of opportunity. Opportunity is everywhere. If you believe you will reach your definition of success, opportunity will show up everywhere, everywhere you look. I choose to make a priority in my life. Big dreams and things I must have. I must have great health. I must have abundance. I must set an example, an example to my family, an example to anyone who crosses my path, an example of I can, an example of when I say something, I do it, an example of nothing is impossible. Nothing is off limits. There's no truth to statements like, you can't get in the best shape of your life. There's only what you make as a priority in your life. If health and energy are your priority, you will find a way to get the right diet, the right program, and you will push yourself until you get to that level you must get to. There's no such thing as you don't have time. You make time for the things that are your priority to you. The people, the things you believe you must do. Whatever you make a priority, you can make a success. Choose to make your life a priority, your success a priority, your health a priority, your happiness a priority. Choose to make greatness your priority. If you're complaining about why you haven't achieved your goals yet, the first problem is just that. You complain too much. If you're not willing to work for it, don't complain about not having it. 
If you don't know why you haven't achieved anything great in your life yet, let me tell you why. This is why you don't succeed. Number one, you think about what it's going to cost more than what it's worth. Is your dream worth the price you must pay to get it? And my let's say, successful people don't negotiate price. They negotiate worth. Is your dream worth the price you must pay to get it? The sacrifice, the long days, the early mornings, and the late nights, the lonely roads, the effort, the failures, the embarrassment. Is the end result worth the pain? Most people count the cost, but are never willing to pay the price. Successful people pay up front, and they are paid back with interest in the future. Don't count the cost of your dreams. Understand what it's worth, and pay any price to get it. Number two, you point the finger outwards but never inwards. If you want to see the person responsible for all your failures in life, look in the mirror. The good news is, you won't have to move to see the person who is responsible for all your achievements. Take responsibility for everything that shows up in your life. The wins, the losses, the blessings, the lessons. Own them all. Financial crisis destroyed your business. Own it. Learn from it. Grow from it. Six months of your savings wiped out. Why didn't you have six years worth? Learn from it. Grow from it. Improve from it. Partner took everything in a nasty breakup. Could you have picked a better partner? Own it. Learn from it. Grow from it. It's easy to blame everyone and everything for our failures, isn't it? That means we don't have to do anything to change. Blame it gets you off the hook. But it will never get you the life you dream of. Only responsibility will do that. Take that responsibility. Number three. Your word means nothing. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you don't, you will lose respect from two people. First, the person you gave your word to, but more importantly, yourself. Every time you go against your word, you lose integrity and respect for yourself. Be someone who follows through with their word. If you can't get something done on time, be honest and open about it. People respect honesty over everything. If you have no intentions of seeing someone again, tell them. If you're struggling at work, tell someone. Be one of the rare few who are real enough with themselves and others. That is what builds respect and powerful relationships with others and within yourself. Number four, you live for other people's praise, not your own purpose. Most people do just about everything in their life thinking about what other people would think of them. They pick a job that they think other people would think is a great job. They pick a partner that they think other people would think is a great partner. They do everything based on what they think other people would think. Other people. What about you? You cannot be successful if you are living your life for other people's approval. This is not someone else's life. This is yours. And you can never live fully and reach your true potential. If you are a fraud, pick everything in life that you want. Follow your passions, not your parents. Or what you think looks good to your circle. Your passion. Chase things that are purposeful to you. It will make working on it far easier. It will make quitting impossible. Number five, you are obsessed with money, but not your purpose. The great irony is most unsuccessful people think that successful people are obsessed with money. But successful people rarely ever stress over money. Unsuccessful people do. Successful people don't gamble to win men or play the lottery. Unsuccessful people do. No successful person is obsessed with money. They're obsessed with adding value with creating something special, with growing, and pushing the limits. Their focus is rarely ever on financial reward, but with personal pride in what they're doing. Chase the money alone and you will be alone chasing it forever. 
chase your purpose and the money and fulfillment will chase you. Don't get distracted by shiny objects. Chase meaning and purpose instead. If you think you've been working hard and haven't made it yet, work harder. Work smarter. Find another way. There's always a way. We are all in the gutter. But some of us are looking at the stars. What does this famous quote by Oscar Wilde actually mean? How do you interpret his words? What meaning do you give these words? We are all in the gutter. But some of us are looking at the stars. Our interpretation. We all have our own challenges and issues unique to us. No one goes through life without challenges. The difference in the quality of life we live is how we respond to those challenges and what meaning we give them. Some of us choose to see only the gutter, the pain, the problems, the struggle. However, some choose to look at the stars, to dream of better, to believe there is better, to focus on the positive and work toward making something magical of this life. Your life is what you make it. You can be happy with little, or miserable with much. You can make a lot from a little or lose everything from having a lot. Everything comes down to you. How you decide to live each day, what meaning you give to each challenge, what actions you decide to take each moment of each day. Some choose to throw in the town. They say they will never make it because this happened and because that person did this to me. They frequently blame others for their misfortune and constantly play the luck card. On the flip side, some who face massive challenges and big life issues choose to react differently. They will rise early knowing that every day is a new day and a new opportunity. Knowing that no yesterday has control over how you react today. Knowing that today and right now, you can take the first step towards turning your life into something far greater than you ever imagined. So take a step forward today. No matter how small, and then another step tomorrow, and another the next day, and always ensure you are moving forward. Always ensure you are looking at the stars, keeping your goals and dreams in the forefront of your mind, remaining alert to opportunities, seeking opportunities to move forward, and capitalizing when they arrive. Next time you're in a challenging moment, know that you can remain there. Play the victim role as most do. Give up as most do. Use the event as a reason why you didn't make it also as most do. Or you can do what the minority do, which is decide you are greater than any challenge. And it is never about how great the challenge is in your life. See, you will only ever be defined by how you react to your challenging moments. So stay strong, remain hungry, and always be looking up at the stars. wake up every morning, what drives you? If you want to live a life of success, a life of complete success, happiness and fulfillment, you must find your purpose. You see, if you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know what drives you, what inspires you, then you have no reason to improve your life. How can you improve your life if you have no reason to improve it? Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? What's the reason? Why do you exist? Do you know what it takes to be great? Are you willing to go that extra mile? I tell you time and time again, you will get tired. But if you have a why, we'll give you that extra strength, that extra foot you need, that extra hour you need, the courage. Why are you different from everyone else who's trying to do the same thing you're doing? What makes you stand out? Why are you so important? Find your why. Your why will pull you up when you feel like you don't have the strength to get up anymore. Your why will keep you fighting when everyone else thinks you are out for the count. Why? Who are you fighting for? What drives you? Is your purpose your family? Is it to prove the doubt is wrong? Is it to prove yourself right? What is your purpose? Write down your purpose. Carry it with you everywhere. Feel it deep 
and promise yourself every day you will live your purpose with zero excuses. Somebody's waiting for you to mess up. Somebody's waiting for you to give up. Someone is waiting for you to fall. So when you're challenged by life, what are you going to do? When you feel like you're at your lowest point in life, will you throw in the time? Or will you make the moves to be successful? Don't look back. Just remember where you came from. And let that drive push you to go forward. It's not always going to be an easy road. And when you reach success, you won't take it for granted. You'll cherish those moments you had to go through. Those moments you were without. And when you fall down, get back up. Dust yourself off. You need to find something that drives you. Something that no matter what happens, this part of you does not change. This drive in you does not change. This purpose never dies. No matter how many times life knocks you down, your purpose pulls you up every time. This is the reason I will fight for my dreams. This is the reason I will not take no for an answer. When it hurts, keep going. Those cloudy days, those storms, telling you to keep going. Those times in your life when you can't see how you're gonna make it. Some things you can't change. You just have to live with. But if you do have a choice, make the right choice. Your purpose is that one thing that lights you up. It's the one thing that will get you up early. That one thing. When you're doing it, time stops. Your purpose may be something you don't want. It may be seeing someone in your past and thinking, no matter what, I will ensure I never end up like that. Your purpose is always something that lights a fire in you. I will do this no matter what. My family is counting on me. My friends are counting on me. I am counting on me. so disciplined people say you're obsessed you've got to be so obsessed that you actually get results and then those same people would be obsessed with asking you how you did it let them call you obsessed obsessed gets results ease does it every now and then does it if you want results you must be obsessed you've got to work so hard and be so passionate about what you do that people think you're crazy. You got to be so in love with your work that no one understands. They'll certainly understand when you show them your results. They don't have to understand. Let them remain confused. Confused by your obsession. Shocked with your results. You have to have a laser-like focus. When it comes to getting what you want in life, you have to lock in and find a way to make it happen. It has to become your obsession. You have to be desperate for it. If you don't care enough about your goal to make it your absolute obsession, you'll never achieve it. If you don't care about it enough to think about it every spare moment, to obsess over how you will achieve it, to learn how you can achieve it. If you don't care that much, you don't deserve your dream. Finish. 
finish, and I must finish first. When I do anything, I must do it better than anyone. I am obsessed. I am never satisfied. Never content. I will not accept average. I will work until the outcome is mine. I will go above and beyond. I do not believe in limitation. I do not see lack. I see a goal. I develop my plan. I dive in. I do the work. And I get the rewards. Turn your every now and then to every single day. Turn your passion into your obsession. Turn your shoulds into musts. You must stop living a small life to make others happy. The reality is all of us are surrounded by people that we love, that want good things for us. And yet, when we begin to strive, when we begin to change and transform and become that person that we were always meant to be, suddenly, the people in our lives that love us the most are often the ones that come at us accusing us of having changed and making us feel guilty for trying to become something new. But at the end of the day, that's about them. That's their insecurity that's being triggered and has nothing to do with you. The life that you craft for yourself, the life that you want to live is something that should fill you with excitement and shouldn't have anything to do with what other people think. And that's why, even though we're a social animal that longs, longs for the acceptance of other people, you cannot, for the sake of your own happiness, you cannot allow small, minded people to make you small. You've got to be willing to reach for something. You've got to be willing to strive, to change, to gain mastery, to get great, to strive, to truly be the best at what you love. And when you do that, if some people get left behind, remember, it's not you letting them go. It's them refusing to keep up. And it's heartbreaking to watch it when it's someone that you love, when it's someone that you care about, to see them in pain and to see them accuse you of something when you know in your heart that you want great things for them. And it doesn't mean that they don't love you. That's the weirdest thing about this. It doesn't mean they don't care. It simply means they can't get past the way it makes them feel because they haven't accepted responsibility for their life. And watching you pull away from them who them is an indictment of who they are. It means that what they are isn't good enough. And even though you're not saying that, their insecurities will make them believe that to the ends. And so you cannot let their fixed mindset, their vision of the trap that they're in become the prison of your mind. You've got to understand that this life is about acquiring skills and really pushing yourself to see how much you can do because you really can do whatever you set your mind to. But first, you have to set your mind to being free of what others think of you.